Hey gang, welcome back to another edition of the Forex Market Preview. My name, of course, is Jason Stapleton, and I'm the guy who's going to walk you through the currency markets this week. And I had a little hiccup with my video last week. I hope I don't have the same problem this week. I actually switched cameras, and I think that that might be the problem, or maybe the fact that I switched computers too, so you never know. But I'm going to, hopefully we'll solve the problem. If not, I'll do something different next week to see if I can't remedy the problem. But uh, the biggest news this week, of course, if you don't know what we do here, by the way, is I take you through the currency markets and I show you what I think is going to happen next week. And you can either use that information, you can completely ignore it, uh, laugh at it, criticize it, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I put it out anyway. I've been doing so since about 2009. And we're going to continue to do it until uh, I just absolutely cannot stand it anymore, which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon. But the big news this week, uh, inevitably or undoubtedly, would, has been the Swissy news. Uh, there's a massive amount of fallout from that. What happened was the, there had been a cap on the Swissy. And if I can just, let me just show you what that looks like. So let me flip over here. And I'm just, I'm going to use the pound Swissy instead of, actually, let's use the Euro Swissy because that's the one that everyone was talking about. So here is the Euro Swissy, and this is the major decline that we saw, the adjustment there. Well, what had happened, I want you to look right here at about a dollar twenty. A dollar twenty, you can see how the market has sustained and held that one twenty line, and we have never we have not gone below that one twenty threshold since uh, and you can see it all the way even back here, the one twenty threshold, since for about three years. That's because for the past three years the Swiss National Bank has said we are not going to allow the Euro Swissy to dip below 120. And so any time it would try and dip below this 120 level, the Swiss National Bank would step in and buy whatever it needed to buy in order to hold the currency of up above a buck 20. Uh, now, those of you can understand who understand a little bit about economics can understand the folly of this long term. What they had expected to happen was eventually they would end up letting it go and letting it decline and we would allow for a more gradual decline of this. Unfortunately, that's not the way it worked. What happened was they were taking a look around the market and they were looking at a strengthening dollar and the Federal Reserve basically outlining that it intended to raise interest rates. You also had the European Union at the same time doing everything but outright saying that they were going to start a quantitative easing program. And those in the Swiss National Bank knew that they could not continue to support, continue to pump money into the Swissy to hold it above 120 if and when the European Central Bank decided that it was going to go ahead and make good on its promise to start some sort of quantitative easing program that that would just end up crushing the euro. And you can see the decline of the euro that's happened here. Uh, this is the daily chart from back in basically, uh, when was this, uh, May of last year or April of last year until today. It's been just basically a straight downward move from about $1.38 now to sitting around $1.16. And it doesn't surprise me at all that they finally just looked at this and said, well, we're going to have to, we can't continue to hold this up. Now, the reason they were doing that was to kind of prop up their own economy. And I don't want to get into the economics of it or discuss really the dangers of central bank injecting itself or, or making decisions outside of the free market. I don't think that's a conversation for today. What I do think is critically important that you understand from what the big takeaway as a trader is this concept that you can, in fact, lose more than you have in your account. Because what most people didn't understand is they thought there was a floor at $1.20 and that there's no way that the market could go below $1.20. So they either didn't have stops in or they had stops in just expecting that, okay, if something radical does happen, at least I'll be stopped out. And, but I've got the central bank essentially acting as a, as a, as a hedge against the downside risk. Well, when the central bank pulled its protection of the Swissy, what you saw was in a matter of seconds, a major rollover. So let me go down to the 15 minute chart here and you can see within 15 minutes, we dropped from 120 down to 117.50. So several hundred pips right there 
If you didn't have a stop in place, if you were expecting the Swiss National Bank to prop you up and protect you, what happened next in the next half, in the next 15 minutes when everybody else got wind of what had just happened, we dropped from 117.50s down to one uh, 103s. This has caused, uh, I, I'm sorry, I should have had you flipped over here and looking at this. So in the first 15 minutes, you lost uh, 20 down to basically 250 pips. And then immediately after that, and I don't know exactly where this happened. Let's just see where it happened in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so this happened within five minutes here. This was five minutes, then the next five minutes. And if we go down to the one minute chart, I'm not sure if I can get back there far enough, but I bet I can where we see the actual collapse. There it is. Mm, I, yeah. So this, 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 this total collapse happened within two minutes. It actually probably happened a lot quicker than that. Within, 30, within probably 60 to 90 seconds, you saw this entire move happen. It was almost instantaneous. What happens when that occurs, folks, is that there are no buyers. Your stop that you have in place, it's not like a demo account. It doesn't automatically fill you right where your stop is. When your stop is hit, what it does is it executes a market order, which it basically tells your broker, okay, I didn't want it to go past this point, so now I want you to go out, you, I want you to find me the absolute best price that you can get for me, and I want you to get me out of this position. Now, in a slow-moving market, it has almost, it'll, it'll exit you almost exactly where your stop is. But in a fast-moving market like this, especially a fast-moving market like this, some people lost um, thousands, if not tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I want to, you to envision this, and I talk with my private clients in, or my, with my syndicate group in War Room about this, but I want to reiterate it for you guys. Imagine going to bed, you've got about $20,000 in your trading account, don't have a stop in place, and you could take basically a 200 pip loss before you wiped out your account on the Euro Swissy trade that you're long. But you think, you know, there's no real reason to worry about it because the Swiss bank is backing the Swissy. So I don't really need to have a stop in place. I'll just continue to buy up at around 120 and catch the little pops that occur off of that. It's a strategy that one could use. You go to bed, $20,000 in your account. You wake up the next morning, find out that the market has fallen to a dollar three, and now instead of having plus 20,000 in your account, you have negative $150,000 in your account. And now the broker is turning around to you and saying, "Hey, you owe us $150,000." And you're saying, "Wait, but I had a stop in place. The stop was at, you know, at 50 pips or 75 pips or whatever the case may be." And they say, "We're sorry." When we went to fill your market order, there were no buyers. The market just kept falling and falling and falling and falling, and we couldn't find an order for you until the market hit 104. So you've been wiped out. Your account's in the negative. You owe us $150,000. Pay up. That is what a huge number of people are now dealing with in the currency markets today. So much so that FXCM is outside of its margin requirements or outside of its uh, statutory requirements for capital on hand. They've lost, their clients owe them about $225 million. Other brokerages have had to close. I just read that one of the largest hedge funds in the world is now having to shut down its, uh, its primary fund because it essentially was wiped out by this Euro Swissy trade. There are some major calamities that have occurred here. But the one takeaway from this, guys, is that you are never safe. This is why we always say we risk small. We're not trying to swing for the fences. We're not trying to make millions of bucks off one trade. What we're trying to do is do incremental gains. And we don't put ourselves, we try not to put ourselves in a position where we're going to wipe out an account. And if we do get into a position, we certainly don't want to have so much exposure that we risk losing everything in some sort of catastrophic event like this. Some of them you just can't avoid. If you were long Euro Swissy here, there was absolutely no way that you could get out of it. You just were going to have to take your licks. But it is a word of caution. It's, it's, a, it's a really important point to just say, this is why we're always careful. This is why it's so important to recognize that it's not just, oh, I can't ever lose more than it's in my account because they'll just margin call me and I'll get out. No, no, no. You could lose significantly more. And those folks who have lost tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, I can guarantee you that those brokerages are going to attempt to claim on that money. And it's going to cause bankruptcy 
in a lot of cases for a lot of folks who, you know, who got involved in this business. So it's something to think about, and I don't want to, I don't want to harp on it, but I do just want to make a point and say, hey, look, you've, you just have to be careful. You have to understand the risk. You have to really know what your risks are when you're getting into this game, because it is not a game for the faint of heart. This is not a business that you come into halfway. You have to be 100% committed to what you are doing and understanding it and treating it like a business. If you're not willing to do that, chances are you're going to get shellacked. Uh, if you get overextended, even some large hedge funds, like I said, thought they had it figured out. They did not. And they have lost millions. I think something like $838 million in that fund, virtually gone. Think about that. It's pretty, it's, it's crazy. But let's continue. Let's, let's talk about what is going to happen next week or what we think is going to happen next week. All right, let's get on to the daily chart here. Now, I identified this. I don't think I did this in the Forex Market Preview last week, but I did identify it for our traders in War Room in the syndicate this week. This is the potential reversal zone I've outlined here. And if we go down to the hourly chart, you can see we have a 2618 trade setting up. Market double bottoming here, then rallying out of that. We got the break above, close above happening right here. Okay, now we're looking for the 618 retracement. Now, for those of you guys who do not know what the 2618 trade is, all you need to do is go to the YouTube page. You're watching this on a YouTube video, so just go to the Forex Market Preview YouTube page and look underneath, uh, I think it's called My Best Stuff, and there is actually a link to that training. It is a free training for you guys on this particular trading strategy. It doesn't cost you a penny. Just go watch it. It's about two hours long. I teach you a lot about technical analysis and also how to identify and trade a 2618 trade. But this particular trade, what we're looking for is a pullback down into the 618 retracement. That will come in at around 135.34s, assuming that we don't break out into new structure highs here. So 135.34s is going to be the buy. We're looking to buy 135.34s in anticipation of a rally. So we want to see the market come back down into the 618, and then we're going to look for a rally out of that. And if you want to know all of the rules about how that works, just simply, like I said, go to the YouTube page, find the 268 uh, free trading strategy, I think is the name of the video, and, uh, and check it out. Now, USD Canada. I think USD Canada is primed for a reversal. Look at the market here. We had a big dip market got sucked right back up again then we tried to go the other direction with it couldn't get up and now we're just kind of like sitting here in the market doesn't know what to do I think we're poised for a rollover let me go out to the weekly chart in the weekly chart we're still putting in nice highs but look at where we are we're overbought at 90 on the RSI here on Canada we're sitting right at a 1414 extension I go back down to my daily chart I'm gonna find the market overbought again still in an overbought situation sitting at around uh, 83s we consider anything above 80 to be overbought and if i come down here to my hourly chart you're going to see we just came out of an overbought condition so you have a decent area here where you can look to short you've got a clear place where your stops need to go above the swing high here and you've got potentially a move back down into these lows around 118s so if you're just looking at your potential risk to reward here I'll just, you know, assuming that we open right where we closed at the end of Friday, that's your risk versus some potential reward back down here. Boom. And uh, and that, you know, that's pretty decent. It's about two to one on your risk reward profile. And we're up against uh, a Fibonacci level. Now, there is no structure there. I didn't show you guys that, but we don't have any structure. But it's just interesting to note, I really, my gut tells me here, we're going to be looking for a rollover on USD CAD. So watch that. Apply your own rule set. We are starting to see some failures in the dollar market. As you can see here, Aussie dollar not making new structure lows. The euro did. The euro, if I go to the euro, we're continuing to make new structure lows. We actually looked this week to do a buy at around the last structure support level here at around 116.50s. It just went right through it. We didn't have the, we had a double bottom there. It didn't end up doing what we wanted to, ended up stopping us out. So we're continuing to make lower lows there. But pound dollar, you can see we've stopped our descent, at least temporarily. Dollar yen, we've stopped our, uh, our trek here of, uh, of dollar strength. New Zealand, we've stopped our descent, holding there. 
Let's go down to, uh, what else did we look at? Aussie dollar, which is what we were just looking at. We've stopped our descent there. That's another reason why I think, hey, Canada may be a decent short here. Yen pairs, uh, let's go to Aussie yen, pound yen. These all were affected as well by the Swissy move. Saw large rollovers here. And so, you know, it's something to, to keep in mind as well. But So we've got USD CAD, I think, is a good short. 2618 trade on Euro yen. Coming down here to, let's go down to Bitcoin. I told you guys earlier that I thought Bitcoin was going to be a sell and looking for a move down into a 127 extension around uh, 180s. We did, in fact, move down even even farther than that to almost about 150. And we rallied back up. And in the syndicate, I actually called the buy. Um, after we came down into this 127, I called the buy about right here. And we did press back up into the, initial, the first resistance point that I pointed out around 220. So now, guys, if we continue to rally here, you can see the support zone here. This is what we need to watch. If it holds above 194s. I would expect to see a rally up into around one, uh, two dollars and sixty or two hundred and sixty dollars. That's the next little support level that you see over here. That also coincides with a one twenty seven extension at around two fifty nine or two. I'm sorry, two fifty five. So around $255 is the mark on this. We're looking for the market to rally out of that. Now, like I said, the traders inside the syndicate who are trading Bitcoin are already off half the position at two at two twenty. So they already made a very nice profit coming out about 183 up to about 220. Now the question is, do we continue to see the rally out of this? Do we see another move into the 127 extension or do we resume the downtrend? My guess is that we will see a continuation to the upside to around $2.60. So choose your entries carefully on this but you do have some decent opportunity for some continuation of the rally. Now, once we get to 260s, what happens there? I have no idea. I think the likelihood is, based on the decline so far here on the daily chart, is that when we hit 260, uh, about right here or so, um, this is as good a spot as any to look for shorting opportunities. If we don't, then our next mark is going to be somewhere around $300. So we may try to look for a shorting opportunity around 260 uh, if we get up into that zone. But that will come in due time. So keep an eye on that. But we've, we've been spot on with this Bitcoin decline and calling the rally out of the 127 extension at around uh, $180. So, you know, heed, heed that. Do with that what you will. Gold continuing to surge now at uh, about $1,280. We've broken structure. Look for a pullback here, guys. Actually, there is a shorting opportunity in here. I'm just going to do it for those of you guys who understand this. Uh, I'm going to invert the Fibonacci leg here. Bring it back down in. This 1618 extension around 1283, that's a short. Opportunity to sell this at the 1618. Market's overbought. Looking for a push back down into this previous structure level around 1230s. So there is a shorting opportunity here at the 1618. Or you can wait for this pullback into previous structure resistance, which should end up being support, and try and get on a wave as gold rallies. As I've said, I have no personal opinion about gold or not. I do own gold, just so that you guys understand. I own hard asset gold. And so I would love to see it continue to increase in value. But when it comes to the trading, I don't really care. Play it long, play it short. I, I have no, uh, you know, I, I have no, I'm not trying to, you know, look at it and, and hope and pray that the market goes higher. And so all of my analysis is in back of my mind thinking, oh, it's going to go higher. I don't have any idea. It could easily make new structure lows, uh, come back down and, uh, and retest 1140s. So we're going to play this based on the technicals and the analysis that we know and understand and trust that we know is predictable, and we know that the probabilities work. So other than that, we're going to, you know, I, I got nothing else to say on that. But uh, if you guys want to join the syndicate with me, I'll be in there on Monday for War Room. Every morning I take you guys through. If you like what the Forex Market Preview is, the syndicate is nothing more than me doing that every single day for you guys. Showing you what's happening today, where I think the money's going to get made, showing you what I'm trading, uh, along with Akil. And then there's also some training videos that come out every week and uh, a little training course that we've started to put together for you guys as well. That's free once you uh, once you join the syndicate on a monthly subscription. So I'll put a link to that underneath this video in the about section of the YouTube page. And uh, until next time, guys, good luck, good trading. I'll talk to you soon.